Let's go to New York. Caroline Woods, a senior markets correspondent, standing by with some news flow for us, a little tech talk, but also a fresh breakfast take. Let's start with General Mills. Uh, this has been a really big winner in the Staples category, Caroline, and uh, Staples have done pretty well. And I think for a long time, there was a lot of disappointment in the stock. Um, so is it frustrating to see it kind of getting hit? We're trying to rally it back. Like, what's going on? Well, I think part of the reason that we're seeing shares under pressure, despite a beat on both the top and bottom line, is because this was a, a stock that was performing very well. Shares were up about 14 percent year to date heading into that report. And now, you know, off about 1 percent following earnings. Uh, you know, it's important to note now only trading about 3 percent away from uh, the all time highs. So the bar was high and also profit margins were light due to higher input costs. Uh, so, you know, we're seeing some shares, uh, we're seeing shares under a little bit of pressure, seeing some red here. In terms of the actual numbers, adjusted EPS of $1.07 was two cents higher than analysts were looking for. Revenue fell by about 1% to $4.85 billion. The expectation was for $4.78 billion. Uh, so beat there. The decline was driven by unfavorable net price realization and mix. Uh, you know, I mentioned revenue was down a little bit more than 1%. Profits were also down as well. Could also be uh, why shares are under pressure. In terms of breaking it down, North America retail segment sales were down 2%. North America pet was down 1%. North America food service was flat. They talked about growth in breads, snacks, biscuits, and baking mixes being offset by uh, declines in bakery flour and pizza crust. And then in terms of the international segment, sales were down by about 1%, driven by declines in China. Uh, gross margin fell 130 basis points to 34.8% of net sales. In terms of the outlook, General Mills said amid a continued uncertain macroeconomic backdrop for consumers, they expect volume trends in its categories will gradually improve in fiscal 2025, though full-year category dollar growth is expected to be below the company's long-term growth projections. They did reaffirm their fiscal year 2025 outlook of organic net sales between flat and up 1% and then adjusted EPS between down 1% and up 1% in constant currency. So shares down about 1% right now uh, following these results. So, uh, you know, certainly you know, it, was, it was beat, uh, but, you know, the commentary pretty cautious. Profit and revenue did decline from the year ago period and then margins were light. So... Uh, not a recipe, if you will, for, for gains this morning. Yeah, um, kind of an interesting situation. Uh, selling the yogurt business for $2 billion. Um, you know, it seems like they want to continue to try and like hone in on certain uh, verticals that are doing better than others. Still doesn't seem like many are doing that well, though. <laughs> and like there's still a lot of contraction in a lot of places, whether you mentioned margin. I mean, sales still down. Like, I know they're narrowing it, and it's supposed to turn back up in a couple quarters, but pretty low bar to some extent, despite the stock rally. So, um, I don't know. I mean, it's hanging in there. Like, I feel like it easily could have gotten hit on this after the rally, but it's not. It's, um, you know, marginally lower here. I guess the bar has just gotten pretty low when, like, there was two years of people saying that this was like a dead business. Nobody wants to snack on cereal, et cetera, et cetera. They've done a good job enough of, I guess, diversifying it and, uh, and also selling cereal again. Yeah, I guess it's really just the pizza crust uh, yeah, very that's specific taking the hit in the bread mixes. So right. <laughs> maybe, you know, they'll, they'll be a little bit choosier about their carbs. The, the earnings call is going on right now. So let's yeah, blame see, the carbs. Uh, you know, what the company has to say and, uh, you know, if analysts weigh in at all following that, that call. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, analysts go, uh, average price target like 72 bucks. So they're not super confident uh, in the stock at this point, basically saying that it's uh, you know worth what it's at. Maybe that's the reason why it's not selling off much. All right, let's talk some tech. Right. Um, Microsoft uh, with an AI partnership with BlackRock. Anytime you get two big names like that together, it's going to make splash. Making a splash, not doing a lot in terms of a stock performance sure. for BlackRock or Microsoft, but we know AI requires a whole lot of data. And then in order to work with that data, you need huge servers and computing capacity. So Microsoft is partnering with BlackRock for this massive new AI infrastructure fund worth about $30 billion to build data centers and energy projects to really meet the growing demand for computing power and then to create new sources of power for those facilities. 
The companies are part of the, get ready for it, the Global Artificial Intelligence Infrastructure Investment Partnership, or GAIIP. Other participants, aside from Microsoft BlackRock, are Global Infrastructure Partners, or GIP, which is an infrastructure investor that uh, is being acquired by BlackRock, actually. And then MGX, a tech investor in the UAE. NVIDIA is actually also uh, advising on the design. So these companies are collaborating to pull together upwards of $100 billion to develop these AI data centers and then the energy infrastructure to power them. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella said in a statement that collaborating, uh, the collaboration brings together financial and industry leaders to build the infrastructure of the future and power it in a sustainable way. Uh, these infrastructure investments will uh, chiefly be in the United States, uh, according to the, the statement, uh, and the remainder will be invested in U.S. partner countries. Uh, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, of course, said mobilizing private capital to build AI infrastructure like data centers and power will unlock a multi-trillion dollar long-term investment opportunity, adding data centers are the bedrock of the digital economy and these investments will help power economic growth, create jobs and drive AI technology innovation. So, mm. like I said, Microsoft shares, they're down about six tenths of a percent. BlackRock shares up about six tenths of a percent, but uh, a massive fund here. So, uh, you know. It's, it's trying to capitalize on an area that, you know, AI infrastructure is, has become such a key part of the conversation. Yeah, uh, big uh, couple days for Microsoft messaging about what it's doing, how it's managing expenses and all that stuff. And uh, fresh $30 billion for the industry kind of muted this morning for that type of news, um, especially because, you know, it's BlackRock. You don't really think about them in the tech sense. Uh, but, uh, you know, OK, obviously they've, uh, you know, keeping a big swath of the market running. So I imagine that uh, there's going to be some use of AI, some higher powered, uh, you know, engineering there. I'm sure they could find a way to, you know, work that and uh, in, do what they are. But still, it's like kind of like out of left field a little bit. It's like, all right, you know, BlackRock, 30 billion. OK, we're like moving beyond just the tech sector now. Well, the timing is also pretty key, I would say, not just because AI is obviously, especially from the infrastructure, uh, you know, such a key part of the conversation, but also with the Fed embarking on this rate cutting journey could make some of these infrastructure investments a bit more uh, attractive to investors. So, uh, you know, interesting timing ahead of the Fed rate cut decision later today. Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, hey, lastly, uh, let's talk SMCI real quick. Bullish note out, 600 bucks, super micro, finding some love again, slowly but surely maybe. Yeah, shares catching a bid this morning, up about 3% after getting a bullish rating from Needham. Needham initiated coverage of Supermicro with a buy rating, calling the data center AI company the coolest kid in AI town. Gave it a $600 price target, so shares currently trading at 452 uh, so implied at the time, it implied more than 37 percent upside. Haven't redone the math now with this three uh, percent. Uh, but, you know, basically more than 30, around 35 percent upside. Supermicro was trading around six or I'm sorry, twelve hundred dollars, though, a share earlier this year and is still what, 63 percent away from the highs. So just to kind of put that all into perspective. In terms of uh, Needham's bullishness, there it's not just a value play. They did say that you know it was obviously a value, but they said that you know much of the overhang is already priced into the stock at these levels. Other reasons for bullishness, though, a solid path for growth ahead of it, saying that it's a significant beneficiary from growing investment in AI infrastructure. Uh, forecasts a compound annual revenue growth rate in excess of 55 percent from fiscal year 2021 to fiscal year 2026. However, it does mark. Uh, model a gross margin recovery that is more conservative than management's forecast, but does say that the bear case uh, that gross margin will trend towards the single digits is too pessimistic. So okay. in terms of that $600 price target, it is lower than the median price target of 675. And if you take a look at the breakdown, obviously need them in the bullish camp, but about 53% of analysts are sitting out on the sidelines uh, really? for super micro. Wow. So uh, 40% rated as a buy right now yeah i mean damage done from uh some of the negativity in the reports around it seems like a lot of analysts were really kind of uh uh scared by that uh with so many uh backing away from what was a huge winner in this uh, whole theme in this trade but uh nice uh, rally today on uh the report here from needham for sure so definitely resonating 600 bucks that's a nice uh price target if you think it's going to get there thanks caroline appreciate that very good stuff